Welcome back to another MetPy Monday focused on our archive satellite data series. Last Monday, we ended here with this image of infrared satellite imagery. Today, what we're going to do is move on to, to looking at how we can get our water vapor imagery uh, in brightness temperature 4. And so we're going to go ahead uh, and in our Jupyter notebook, go ahead and create a new notebook. We're going to go ahead and rename this water vapor sats underscore class. Again, you can name it anything you want. And um, we're going to go ahead and copy and paste some things so that we can spend less time typing. And so from our infrared one, we're going to go ahead up here and we're going to copy a whole bunch of information from this first cell, bringing in all the necessary Python modules. Go ahead and run that. And now we need to bring in our water vapor satellite imagery. And so again, we're going to set up our variable. My satellite data is located in a directory one directory up from here. And we're looking for our Go satellite data, and here we are looking for band 3 for our water vapor imagery. Next, we're going to want to bring this in, and so we're going to bring in our dataset underscore water vapor equals datasets, file underscore water vapor, and we're going to bring it in for read purposes. Again, we're going to want to bring in uh, our data in this 10-bit format. And so we're going to be able to do that here. And so we're going to copy and paste from our infrared satellite one, change IR to WV, and change IR again to WV to bring in our water vapor data and convert it to 10-bit format. We're also going to bring in here our lat lawn data. And again, we're going to change this to WV for our water vapor data. Now it turns out we don't actually have to rename these. Uh, in this instance, our water vapor and our infrared data come on the same grid. Uh, uh, we're in the same number of latitudes and longitudes, so those are all pretty standard. But what we need to do now is we want to, again, convert our, our data here. Uh, and so we're going to first ma mask our data. So we're going to mask our water vapor data. Again, you can retype out all of this or simply copy and paste so that we can do overall less typing. And so we're going to have our mask data set based on our latitude mask. And now we want to convert our 10-bit count data to our scene radiance data. And so we're going to go ahead and copy all of this over just so we have everything set up. The problem is that we're going to need to change our m values and b values. And so we need to go back to our website that contains our data. And so we need to scroll back up to where we have for goes 12 and above our values for m and b. And we need to copy over our new values of m and b. And so we're going to just replace these values with our values for M and B for channel three, which is our water vapor channel. And then we're gonna to wanna to switch over all of our IRs to water vapor, just so we have everything set up. So now we've got our scene radiances. Again here, our inverse Planck function coefficients don't change. And so we can just copy and paste those, have those set up. But then we're gonna need a copy over different values for our coefficients for channel 3. So again, let's change these n underscore ir to water vapor, ir to wv, ir to wv. And again, we need to go back to the website to find out our values here from table 2-6 for goes 13, channel 3, side a, Go ahead and copy and paste here the value for n, the value for a, and the value for b.
And once we have our coefficients set, then we need to do our calculation to get to our effective temperature. So go ahead and copy and paste here our function from our previous Jupyter notebook looking at infrared radiation. And here we are now just looking at a different part of the infrared spectrum uh, that is specifically our water vapor channels. And so we need to change over all of our IRs to water vapors again so that we make sure we have a clean thing. If we miss one, we may see an error uh, that would uh, allude us to the fact that it can't find a variable, but we in fact did get all of them. And here is just our runtime warning about not a good value in our natural log. But that one's just a warning and that's okay. And so once we've gotten our new uh, effective temperature for our water vapor, now we wanna go ahead and actually calculate the true brightness temperature. Again, here we need to change our water vapors, or our infrareds to water vapors, that is, for all of these different values. And printing out the max value at the end. And so we see here for our water vapor channel, the max brightness value is 260 Kelvin. Coming back over here, we're gonna excise a few of these things into a couple different cells. And so first we're gonna copy over our coordinate reference system and our ability to find our lat lawn points for our set extent. So again, we're setting up our geostationary projection based on minus 75 degrees longitude, which is where Ghost East is situated. And now we wanna find our index values for our lat lawn points and then transform those into our uh, appropriate reference system for our geostationary projection. And again, here we need to change our IRs to WVs. And so we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste after doing one, because it is easy enough to double click and paste. And so we need to do that down here as well. Again, if you miss one, you'll get one that will, uh, you'll get an error from the notebook that will try to tell you about where that is located. And so after we've made all of our changes, we can go ahead and run the cell. Sure enough, we happen to find all of them that time. So now we have our correct lat lawn points to set up for our set extent. We're gonna get, go ahead and pull over the valid time here, needing to change our data set from infrared to water vapor. And then finally pulling over the rest of our figure for plotting purposes. So again, copying and pasting here to save us a whole bunch of typing. So going through here, we haven't changed the name of map CRS, but we have changed now from infrared to water vapor for our brightness temperature. We're gonna use, we're gonna continue to use just our grayscale image. And now we are plotting water vapor satellite imagery. Otherwise, we're still wanting to bring in our coastlines and our titles. And we can go ahead and run that. And it takes just a few seconds here to then get to our water vapor satellite imagery. And so we have a very nice image here, again, in our grayscale. In the next MetPy Monday, we're going to look at how we can um, bring in color to both our infrared satellite imagery and our water vapor satellite imagery using color tables available in the MetPy uh, toolbox. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.